Hi guys and welcome back um, to the second video on in building your um, GTEC A20 3D printer. Now if possible give yourself a nice clear space to do this. Lay it all out, keep it all um, sort of tidy and you can see everything. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. There's um, there's not a lot to it. There's a, 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 where it's going to get complicated is we start when we start assembling the wiring loom, but I'll talk about that in a bit. The plate here. The first thing I do once you've got everything out, there's a protective film on this. I've already taken it off. Um, just peel that off, and then make sure it's nice and dust free. And then you've got here. This is the material you're actually going to print on. It's adhesive. Peel that off like that. Line it up so it faces the front of the printer. And that should be that. This is the best time to do this. You can do this at any time when the printer's up. It just gives you a nice clean plate while the gantry is, is off. So that's that. So the first part of the printer to go on is going to be this piece. This is called a gantry and on the front of it there is your extruder. That's where your filament feeds through and where your printing actually happens. And it slots on fairly straightforward like that, screwed from underneath. So I'll show you that in a minute. In your box you have that instruction sheet it basically takes you through everything now I think this instruction sheet is is almost worthless I think this was given to somebody who has never seen an instruction sheet or decided to to treat it like a piece of experimental conceptual art this is not to be taken literally there are things in here which are simply not correct um, and the layout and the photographs are terrible but hang on to it but I'm going to talk you through it there are a couple of things that aren't even mentioned in here you'll find a little part that looks like that it's called a filament sensor that has to go on to the um, filament motor I'll talk I'll show you how to do that um, they didn't even mention it in this so we'll look at the, the, the instructions, but let's not, they're for guidance at best. But the first stage is fairly, absolutely straightforward. We need four bolts, and we've got four of these 30 mil long bolts. And then onto one, each of these, I want you to place what's called a split washer, they're the little round washers. If you put the washers on now, you won't forget them. You know what they're on. So we're ready to go um, to start assembling this. Now there is a little note um, that also comes with this printer, this one here. I'll show you a, a close-up photo of it now. This should be set at 230 volts, right? If it isn't, you have to change it. Uh, it's a switch, it's actually at the back of the machine. You'll see a little yellow thing there, a little red switch in there, and it should say 230. If it says 230, you don't need to worry about it. Just leave it alone. If it says 110, you need to switch it. So, you would need your 5mm Allen key, or hex wrench. And we're going to lift this up on its side like that. Bring your cradle forward like that, your gantry forward like that, and it slots on, or fits on like that, and you then somewhat awkwardly, but it's not too bad, line up your first screw. Oh, 
Okay guys, gantry is assembled, that's the machine fundamentally together. According to what we shall charitably call the instructions, the next stage they'll ask you to do is to fit the um, filament holder, which is fits up here, and this is where your roll of filament um, hangs and it feeds down into the um, feeder, into the filament motor. It's quite easy to put together. Just open that, tighten that screw off, and tighten it up. And then that fits on there like that. Now, according to the instructions, um, take down the plastic screw at one end, and then you screw it through to the holders that are slotted in there, except um, they're not, they're not there. Uh, might be just my one, but there are two little silver fitments. I found them in pack number three, and they slot in there, and that's what the holder fits that into. Um, so you want one of your smaller, have your hex wrenches. And I'm going to fit these onto the holder loosely first and then just slot them in there. So just put them on loosely. They slot into a little channel up there. And then you just tighten them in and that tensions them in. Put the wiring to each one of these. Each one of these is a motor and each one of these has a, a series of wires and cable connectors that go to it. They're very much like this. Now the wiring loom um, there, so where it comes from and how it works is pretty straightforward and, it, and it's, it's relatively tidy but again as with the instructions the labeling of these wires is very very small. It's not very clear. The photographs are also not very clear. To help you out in your pack, you'll find that. I printed that out. That'll tell you what each one of these cables is for. There's little numbers on the bottom of it, it'll tell you where that goes. And when I finish assembling this, I'm going to show you and label each one of these motors so that you know which one it is, where it goes to. But the um, assembly itself is quite straightforward uh, as long as you know which one of these cables are. Like I said, they've got different numbers. So I'm going to turn the machine around and I think I shall work from the other side of the table now um, and you can see what I am doing. So and I think I'll come in. Okay guys, we're going to um, begin to assemble the, uh, the wiring into each one of these motors. Um, and then as we do it, uh, we'll sort of see where the parts are. Later on I'm going to just go through and I'll label each one of these separate motors so you know what it are and then you'll, you'll be able to reference it to the, to the numbers here, it'll be much clearer. But for now I'm just going to assemble it. Some of them are a little bit finicky. Um, so I'm going to start with this little short one here. Uh, and this feeds to, to the Y motor, which is the motor that slides this way along that way. Now on most of these motors, the X, Y and Z motors, you've got a power lead to the motor. And then you've got another one which is um, a stop sensor, it just stops, it tells the machine when it's at the end of its run. So the stop sensor tends to be smaller, and this one, which is labelled YES, that's the stop sensor for the Y one. You just slide them in just till they click. You don't have to be too forceful with them, but they, you should hear that click. So that's the Y motor, and then over on this side here, you've got Z, it's a ZM, which is the Z axis motor, which is your up and down. This motor here drives this screw thread, and that lifts the gantry up and down, that's its function, that's the axis. So that slots in. Now. 
the gantry stop is around in an awkward spot on the other side of this. I had to go looking for this, I couldn't find it. And it's actually in a particularly awkward position to get into. But um, be persistent, work it in. So it's, a, it's just a slightly awkward little position, that one. So this one is labeled FDO and EOM. Now if you look at your um, list, they'll tell you that's the filament sensor and the filament motor. So this is the filament motor. The filament sensor we need to actually screw on. I'll do that a bit later. It needs to screw on there. But I'll do that a bit later. But that is the cable for it. So that's your filament motor, which is EOM. And that should just slide in like that. And when we fit the filament sensor, we'll connect that one to there. So that's all good. This one is labelled XM and the next one beside it is XES and that is going to feed through to your um, uh, X axis which is everything across that way which is fundamentally powering this little thing here moving it that way running right, right the motor to that and that is also in an awkward place and I shall find it for you The stock sensor is inside that bit there, and the power motor is underneath like that. Now take your time putting these things together. Make sure you've got the right cable going to the right spot, because they're tricky to get out again. They clip in. We have to talk about that when we go to take these machines apart. The last cable we're going to put in is this rather big chunky one and that runs the extruder head. This, this powers where the filament plastic is actually melted and extruded through. I need to push that through until it clicks. And that should be that. So that's that. So all the wiring is complete. Um, next thing we're going to do is put a little uh, put the filament sensor on there. The filament sensor, the filament feeds through there, and all it does is it detects if you've run out of filament or the filament is broken and it stops the machine. So it doesn't run without filament. The machine also has a um, a function that allows you to restart from exactly where you stopped. So you feed fresh filament through, you'll get an option on the display screen to restart uh, and it'll restart exactly where it stopped. Very useful function that. It'll also work if there's a power cut, it allows you to restart after power cut or if you accidentally unplug it or trip over the plug. So this is the filament motor which we're going to fit to the thing. Uh, you'll find a little set of screws, two screws and two little lock nuts and that's the um, Allen key we're going to use for it. So it fits right on there like that. The filament feeds through it. So drop you've got the screws through there like that and then what you want to do is find your nut Yeah, this is a tricky little thing to do actually. I think once you get the first nut in, it's um, probably going to be a bit easier. Well, that is now in place. So the last thing to do is to connect 
the lead for that. And it's done. That should be the last of the leads that we need to connect.